Hello dear learners, in this session we are going to discuss the ecological adaptations in xerophytic and hydrophytic plants. Adaptation is successful adjustment of plants and animals under prevailing environmental conditions. Plants are adapted to diurnal, seasonal and annual fluctuations or changes in their habitat conditions. In xeric plants, adaptations are purely to survive in dry and hot climate and for conservation of water. While in hydric plants, main adaptations are to adjust according to the fluctuations in water level and pH for availability of gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen and for efficient utilization of available sunlight. The objectives of this session are to understand the purpose and concept of adaptation in plants, to know the ecological adaptations in plants growing in xerophytic conditions and to appreciate the adaptations made by plants to live in hydrophytic habitats. As we know that plants are classified into three main groups on the basis of availability of water. These are xerophytes, mesophytes and hydrophytes. Xerophytes, these plants grow in extreme dry conditions throughout the year. They may be xamophytes, that is the plants growing in deserts, lithophytes, the plants growing on rocks or alpine plants that grow above 14,000 feet altitude. Mesophytes are the plants that grow in optimum soil water conditions for a major part of year. Hydrophytes are the plants growing in fresh or marine water as submerged or floating plants. The plants living in xeric and hydric conditions exhibit marked differences in their morphological, anatomical and physiological characteristics. We will observe whole plant parts and transverse section of leaf, stem or root in the given xeric and hydric specimens and know about the morphological and anatomical adaptive features of the plants. For this exercise, we need plant specimens from xeric and hydric conditions. Samples of xeric plants are Opuntia, as you can see here, Nerium, Casiuraina, Calotropis, etc. For aquatic plant, specimens of Salvinia, Hydrilla, Valicinaria, Articularia can be taken. Permanent slides of TS of Nerium or Calotropis leaf or stem or root and permanent slides of TS of Hydrilla stem, root or leaves and microscope. Now let us take specimens of few xeric plants like Opuntia and Nerium to study xeric adaptations. While handling xerophytes, care must be taken not to get pricked by the spines and thorns of the plants as you can see here. Some xerophytes possess specific chemicals which may irritate eyes or skin. In these plants, we observe following adaptive features. Leaves are few or absent or modified to spines. Petiole is modified into leaf like structure stem is reduced. These modifications are for conservation of water as these plants grow in scarcity of water. In some cases like cacti and succulents, stem is flattened like a leaf. It is green and photosynthetic in function as leaves are reduced to spines. Leaves are generally covered with dense hairs and leaf surface may be shiny for prevention of excessive heat. Leaf blade remains rolled during daytime in many xeric plants to prevent water loss by transpiration. Root system is well developed for efficient absorption of water. While observing slides or diagrams of TS of leaf, you will see following adaptive features meant for reduction of water loss. Few interstellar spaces in plants, stomata are fewer in number and confined to lower surface. Presence of sunken stomata in stomatal pits, needle-like leaves, thick waxy cuticle on leaf surface. 
I hope you have understood the adaptive features of xerophytic plants. Now, let us observe the adaptive features of plants living in hydric conditions like ponds, rivers, sea and other water bodies. Let us take images of few hydrophytic plants like hydrilla and icornia to study hydric adaptations. While collecting water plants, care should be taken about habitat of the plant. Stale water usually has disease causing pathogens and chemicals. Hand gloves must be used to avoid contamination. We observe following adaptive features in these plants. Leaves are long, thin and cylindrical and possess waxy coating to prevent physical and chemical injuries. Leaf plate is pale green, finely dissected with thin cuticle. Petioles are flexible to withstand water current and to carry leaf plate on water surface. Roots are poorly developed, reduced or absent as they are not required for absorption of water or nutrients. The entire plant surface is capable of absorbing water and minerals. Root hairs and root caps are usually absent. Stomata are absent in submerged plants. And in floating plants, stomata are usually present on upper surface of leaf for exchange of gases. Stem is very delicate and usually green in color. While observing slides or diagrams of TS of leaf, you will see following adaptive features meant for survival of plants in water. Roots have root pockets to help in buoyancy. Parenchymatous tissue of stem, roots, petioles and leaves are usually modified into arenchyma to facilitate exchange of gases. As you can see in this slide of TS of leaf, lots of air spaces are visible. Besides gaseous circulations, air spaces also help them to float in water. Xylem and sclerenchyma are poorly developed as plant does not have any requirement for these structures. Sclerites are present. So, you have seen many adaptive features which are commonly seen in plants grown in xeric and hydric conditions that help them to survive in these conditions. Besides, these common adaptive features, plants also develop certain specific features that suit the environment. Now, let us quickly recapitulate what we have learned today. Some plants grow in extreme environment and for survival in such environment, they develop morphological and anatomical adaptations. Depending on their adaptive characteristics, on the basis of availability of water, plants are classified into three main groups. Xerophytes, these plants live in dry and less availability of soil water. Main adaptations in these plants include well established and well branched root system growing deeply in soil. Such roots anchor plant in sandy soil and maximize water uptake. Presence of sunken stomata. Number of stomata is also few waxy cuticle layer over the leaf and other exposed surfaces reduces water evaporation. Leaves are generally covered with hairs. Similarly, plants living in water show lack of elaborate root system and absence of root system in completely submerged plants. Xylem and other lignified tissues are extremely reduced or absent well developed air enchyma for gaseous exchange, lots of air spaces to provide buoyancy to the plant, absorption of water and minerals take place by the entire submerged plant surface, spongy petiole and pedicel provide elasticity and buoyancy. Now, let us try to answer these questions. What are the survival features in plants of xeric habitat? 
why hair, spines and waxy covering are found in xerophytic plants? What is the role of Erenchyma in hydrophytes? On successful completion of this experiment, learner will be able to differentiate organisms, phenomena and processes based on certain characteristics and salient features like xerophytes, mesophytes and hydrophytes on the basis of environmental condition for their survival. Explains the importance of adaptation in plants living in xeric and hydric conditions. Design and implement feasible experimental or investigation plan to verify the facts, principles, phenomena addressing specific scientific questions like what is the importance of succulent leaves for a xerophytic plant and role of erenchyma in hydrophytes, communicates the findings and conclusions in standard scientific language and scientific methods effectively like take part in discussion and participates and presents investigations finding in tabular form. Appreciate or apply biological concepts along with biotechnological skills in daily life in solving problems for extreme environmental conditions. Applies learning of biological concepts and phenomena to hypothetical situations. Thank you.